Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and today I want to revisit a topic I've covered in a old video of mine. Um, if you want to see the video, you can click on the link above me right now and to the right. Um, that video was tips about how to make uh, house music drums. Uh, there's a lot of things I didn't cover in that video, and I want to kind of touch on a few things in this video. This video is going to be much shorter than the first one because in the other one I went over explaining all about programming drums and everything but in this video I just want to cover a few things that a lot of um, people especially people who are just getting started in producing don't realize or um, don't do in their productions so the first thing is kick drum well not only the kick drum but mostly the kick drum you see every musical element you find in a song or in in general in society in in the world around us every sound you hear has a frequency to it um and if you know anything about theory or whatever or physics of sound you know that every note on a keyboard uh, corresponds to a frequency um so for example if i was to drag in a synthesizer like serum and let me make sure this is quiet so I don't break your ears. If I'm playing a C here and I go to um, the spectrum analyzer here and I drag it in and we expand that and I play that C again. If I can get it all on screen. There we go. If I play that C again, as you can see right here, it'll show down in the bottom left that this is 520 hertz roughly 521 give or take a few hertz but this um, principle applies to anything in the sound spectrum that you hear anything that your ears can hear has a frequency um, if I play a very low note like a, a lower octave C as you can see it's still hitting on the C but it's at 263 hertz now regardless of how short or long the sound is or how deep the sound is or how hard it hits um, it's still going to have a frequency and this is a fundamental that carries over into the percussion world which is something that many people don't realize every kick drum if you know what makes up a kick drum you have an initial like kind of like a thwack kind of sound that's the initial uh, you know hit the the head of the mallet on the 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 um, the head of the drum or whatever and that is the the initial whack that doesn't have as much of a frequency or it has a frequency but it's not as important the the next part of the kick is the subby like boom and that's the part you, you hear a lot of but because that note at the end and that it of the kick drum is so long and it hits for a certain amount of time that kick sh carries an audible frequency that you can detect so every kick drum you have is going to be in a different key. If we go to my favorite kit here, Black Octopus Levithian, they label the keys of the kick drum. It, a lot of packs actually do it nowadays, but they didn't used to. As you can see, they say Lev Kick A, or Lev Kick C, or D Sharp. The thing is that you want to make your key correspond to a harmonic key to your song. The easiest way to do this is that is if your song is in C, the key of C, you take a kick drum in the key of C, or you tune your kick drum to a C. Let's just do that real quick. If we have a kick drum that is in D, say, if I go to my drum rack here, I put a C on the um, serum here, and I give it a play. Okay. Let me give that a little bit of volume here. And then I play that kick drum, it's not going to sound right. If you, if you notice, it sounds a little bit too high. Because we're playing a kick drum at D when it should be at C. And immediately after we tune this kick drum down to C, you'll realize how much better it sounds in the mix. This is something called uh, percussion tuning, and it's something that a lot of people don't understand or don't do when they're just starting out as musicians. A lot of experienced musicians don't even do it. So if we take that kick drum here and we go to controls and we look at a keyboard, let's look at the Serum keyboard here. 
if we're at D here, and we need to get to C here, all we have to do is go down one, two half steps. So if we go to the kick drum here, and we go to the transpose, um, we have to go down, or we have to transpose it by one step, because two half steps equals one step. So if we play it now, it'll sound more in key with the synth. So let's just grab a C kick just to show you a little bit of contrast so we don't have to change any of the transpose on it. But if we play a C kick, it's going to sound a lot better with it anyway. That's not a good kick. See how that kind of sits better with the C note? So again, if you have a kick drum or any other percussion, it's a good idea to tune it. A, a good way of telling the uh, key of your percussion if you can't see it, like it's labeled here, this, this kick is labeled as lev kick C. Um, if we have like an A per se, let's just find a decent kick. Okay, that'll work. And we want to find out what key the kick drum is in or whatever is in, say a clap or a snare. What we have to do is we throw a spectrum on it, and like we did before, we play the kick drum, and we find its fundamental frequency, which is the highest frequency in the sound, the one that's playing the loudest, and we find that and we kind of scope it out. And as you can see, this is an A kick, and if we look at the spectrum here, we can see that right on the A is the fundamental frequency, and it's playing at around 500 or 55 hertz. So it's a good way to detect the key of your samples. If we look here where that fundamental is, it's going to say in the bottom left in Ableton Spectrum here, A natural or A zero because it's on the first octave. So it's just a quick tip. You always want to tune your percussion to whatever, um, whatever sound, whatever key your song is in. That's the first tip of today. The next tip is to keep your drums relatively short. This is something that a lot of producers um, don't follow. Uh, it, it also depends heavily on the genre, granted, because in some things like synth pop, you want a very long snare, or in dubstep, you want a very bassy and, and hard-hitting kick that lasts a little bit longer than a house thwack. But in house music, you want to keep your samples as short as possible. So let's just do that here. If we shrink down this kick drum sample, we want to cut it to about the minimum we see the wave uh, fluctuating at all. So right around here. And we're going to turn up the fade out time so that it fades out a little bit smoother. And um, let's hear how that sounds. So now we're taking up as little space as um, we can in the kick drum. So it's not taking up as long of a time and we're going to have it in the mix sit a little bit better because it's going to come in fast and then leave fast so we have more room for the bass to work. Uh, Sidechain compressors work very well with very short kick drums. Um, I think Steve Duda did a video. He's the creator of X for Serum and um, X for Records. They did Cthulhu too and Nerve. Um, he did a video on his old mixing uh, job. He used to work as a mix engineer and one of the biggest things he always found was that the uh, drums he had weren't uh, short enough. They, the drums that people sent him were kind of exaggerated and the kick drum was held out a little bit too long. If I can find that video, I will post it above me now, but if not, I will, um, I will not. <laughs> but take my word for it, that's what he said. He said uh, the kick drums in some of the songs he got weren't short enough and it's better to have short samples than it is to have long samples. The next thing I want to cover is the final thing of this video. Um, it's going to be utilizing velocity to kind of sell the effect of motion. Um, if I put the kick drums on every beat here and we make a new drum rack, well actually I'll just use the same one. Um, and we'll go to a percussion element like a hi-hat. I'm not going to tune the hi-hat for the purpose of this video. 
um, just to save a little bit of time here. But if we were to play this here, and you see how I set it to the, the initial hit of the, um, the sample here, we want to align it to the, the shortest possible place on the sample and the shortest end point so that we're saving enough space or saving as much space as possible here. So let's turn up the fade out a little bit. And then if we play um, a on off pattern here, if we hit play, it sounds kind of static, but if we do something like this, it sounds kind of rushed. So a good thing to do is to utilize velocity to kind of sell the effect of motion here. So if we select this note here, we hold the shift key, select this note, this note, and this note, we know that after every kick we want a softer hi-hat. So we're going to turn those velocities down. And we're going to hit the second one like a boom tss tss tss. So it's going to hit the next one here. And we want that to be a little bit softer as well. So let's select all these and turn those down a little bit. So if we play this now, it's going to sell the effect of motion a lot more. It's going to be a little bit more groovy. Cool. So that's something to keep in mind. You always want to kind of give your hats and your, your drums in general a little bit of uh, velocity modulation in places just to sell the effect of it being a natural drum instead of a, you know, super synthesized drum. The only um, the only exception to this is if doing something like um, I don't know genres that don't are are meant to sound kind of electronicy and not natural, but for things like house music or uh, pop or synth pop or whatever you're doing, um, it's best to kind of give it a natural flair, and you can achieve that via the velocities here. Quick note: if you want to shape a bunch of velocities at a time, this is a tip I covered in my uh, top five Ableton uh, hidden tricks and tips video. If you want to learn some really cool tricks, you can check that out above me now. Um, if you highlight a bunch of uh, notes at once and you hold the Alt key and you, I'm sorry, not the Alt key, the Control key or Command key on Mac, you can draw a vector here and shape a lot of velocities at a single time according to that line you draw. So if I do that, it'll make them fade upward like that. And that's just a quick tip because I know it pertains to drums a lot. And um, yeah, again, if you want to check out some more <laughs> interesting and obscure tips in Ableton that you probably didn't know about, click on that link in the description or in the card. Um, so thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Give it a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you disliked it. And let me know your thoughts of it again in the comments below. I love to hear what you guys think of these videos, whether it's good things or bad things. It helps me know what to make for you guys and um, you know what to make in the future. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I do a video every Wednesday and Friday, all kinds of multimedia stuff. Check out my channel trailer if you haven't. Um, it kind of explains everything I do on this channel. And um, yeah, subscribe for future updates, and I will talk to you uh, next week. Talk to you later. Bye.